Good morning, everyone. I wish I could be there in Milan with you. I am in uh, Malmo, Sweden at the moment, just across the bridge from Copenhagen, speaking at a, a Radio Days Europe. Um, but I'm so honored to be asked to speak before you today to talk a little bit about branded podcasts and really where, where spoken word audio is going and the importance of branded podcasts. Uh, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of data. And, and of course, uh, I'm gonna show you some data on why branded podcasts work, why they work well. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about the theory behind it. And even though branded podcasts are fairly new, the reason why they work so well uh, is not, and in fact, has been well proven in, in studies and, and research. So I want to show you a little bit of that and how uh, branded podcasts, I think, are really one of the best ways to reach consumers today. Um, I am going to show you a little bit of uh, data, and it's, it is data from the United States, but I, I hope it's uh, not irrelevant to you there in Italy. Uh, first of all, we do a study every year called the Infinite Dial, and it is a, uh, a nationally representative survey of Americans, Americans 12 plus. And we ask about a, a whole series of different behaviors and media consumption behaviors and things like that. Two things that I want to point out from the Infinite Dial this year. First of all, podcasting is, uh, is not unknown uh, to, the, to the general public. It is now really a mainstream term. Most Americans by far uh, at least know the term. They know what a, uh, they know. They hear people talk about podcasts. They know that a podcast is spoken word audio, typically. Uh, and I will get to a little more about that. But more importantly, not only do they know what a podcast is, while well, they're listening to a podcast. 62% uh, of Americans 12 years of, uh, 12 years of age or older say that they have ever listened to a podcast. Uh, and indeed, about 40% say they've listened to one in the last month. So podcasts are, uh, are, are a mainstream medium in the United States, and it's certainly growing around the world. Uh, we've conducted infinite dial research studies in Canada, Australia, Germany, uh, South Africa, and indeed in all of those countries, we are starting to see podcasting become truly a mainstream medium. We conduct another form of research in the United States called share of ear, and this is a uh, again, a nationally representative survey of all things audio, uh, whatever you can listen to online or offline, whether that's radio or podcasts or audiobooks or even your own music files. We ask people to document all of that for us. We, uh, we survey what type of content it is, music, news, uh, talk, sports, et cetera. Uh, we ask people to keep a diary every, uh, in a day, essentially, every 15 minutes what they have listened to. They are obviously paid for this because it's work. Uh, but we ask them essentially, what type of content was it? What type of audio? Uh, here in the United States, we have Sirius XM, which is satellite radio. They're also asked about podcasts, streaming audio, uh, what device they use. All of this information is totaled up so that we can find out what is the overall share of ear? What percentage of the amount of time that people spend listening to audio is spent with a variety of different types of audio. So back in 2014, when we started Share of Ear, podcasts were 1% of all of the audio that was listened to. That's not 1% of people, that's 1% of the amount of time that we spend listening to audio, which uh, here in America is about four hours per day, and that really has not changed much in the last uh, seven or eight years. So in 2014, about 1% of that was spent listening to podcasts. Today, that's five times uh, as much as it was in 2014. 5% of all of the audio that Americans listen to is indeed podcasts. We also look at spoken word audio. So if we just take music completely out of the equation, uh, in 2014, podcasts were 4% of all of the spoken word audio that Americans listen to. Today, that's 20%. And what's really interesting about that data to me is that spoken word audio in general 
has grown in the United States over that period of time. Uh, when we first started Share of Ear, about 82% of all of the audio that we listened to was music. Today, that's about 76%. Uh, spoken word audio has grown in share compared to music by about 40% since 2014. And podcasts are the biggest reason for that. Podcasting uh, has really started a renaissance for spoken word audio here. Uh, and we think that is really spreading around the world uh, in terms of the other countries that we're talking to. And what's really fascinating about these data, uh, this is with Americans 13 years of age to 24 years of age. So the, the very youngest end of Americans, uh, they spend 16% of their audio time listening to AM FM radio but 35% of their time, more than double, listening to podcasts. So podcasting, when it first started, was very much a, a 30 to 49-year-old medium. But today, uh, a lot of the growth is really coming in on the young end. So there's certainly a lot of consumption of podcasts. There's a lot of listening to podcasts on the young end. Uh, and these are people that are really avoiding traditional advertising. And that's the thing I want to touch on next. We released a study at the very beginning of uh, this year called Super Listeners. Uh, that was done with my company, Edison Research, and uh, another uh, an agency here in the United States called Ad Results Media. And what we looked at in Super Listeners uh, was the percentage of the podcast listening population that listened to uh, at least five hours a week of podcasts. So uh, this is the top end of listening. Uh, these are the people that listen to you know, mo generally more than seven or eight podcast episodes a week, listen to more than five hours of uh, podcasts in, uh, in a given week as a sample of a thousand of these super listeners. And the reason why we wanted to talk to these, uh, what we call super listeners is because they are going to hear the most advertising right? They're listening to so, so much podcast content in a typical week. They're hearing more ads. And we looked at them as the uh, early warning system, as it were, for uh, whether or not we are ruining podcasting with advertising. We do not appear to be ruining podcasting with advertising. But there, is, uh, there are a few things about these super listeners that are worth noting, especially as it relates to branded podcasting. So the first thing I will tell you about uh, this particular group of listeners, now obviously these are uh, heavy listeners to podcasts, they have high income, uh, they spend a lot of money, and some of that money is spent on uh, paid subscriptions to audio services and to video services. I'm showing you here uh, the percentage of super listeners, we've done this study for three years now, who have a paid subscription to uh, an internet uh, TV streaming service. You can see at the top there, Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Hulu, 90% have a paid subscription to one of those services. Uh, today, over half have a paid subscription to a, a premium television channel. Um, and if you look at the bottom, 94% of these super listeners are paying to subscribe to at least one of these television or video services. Now, why does this matter? Well, because these services are largely commercial free. They are largely not advertising supported. If you're watching movies on Netflix, you're not seeing ads in between the movies or in the middle of movies, right? Uh, if you're watching any of these services, you are not seeing advertising. And 94% of these super listeners are not seeing ads when they're watching these streaming services, right? Uh, the same with audio. You have a paid subscription to Spotify uh, Premium. Certainly, you have in Italy. Uh, we have Pandora here as well, which you do not. Uh, an audiobook service like Audible is 40%. Uh, satellite radio, which the music channels on satellite radio are all, all, also commercial free. Uh, but in total, about 76%, uh, right? Three quarters of these super listeners also have a paid subscription to a premium audio service that does not have commercials. They are avoiding commercials. They are not even hearing commercials. When we ask them, what's the most important reason why you have a paid subscription to one of these audio channels? Uh, today, 
say to hear fewer ads, and that has gone up from last year. So over 25% uh, of these super listeners are consciously making the choice to avoid advertising by using a paid subscription to a premium audio service. We asked them, how important is it to you to limit your exposure to advertising? And it's becoming more and more important. Last year, 50% of super listeners said it was important. Today, 59% say it's important. That's quite a jump uh, year over year. So uh, they, these people don't like ads. And maybe, you know, here uh, in this room, uh, advertising may be part of our business. Uh, but let's face it, a lot of advertising is terrible, <laughs> right? Yeah, and what these super listeners are telling us is that they are doing what they can to try to avoid advertising in their lives. And they are paying to do it. And that's uh, something that has really increased here in the United States uh, over the last 10 to over, over the last five years, really. People are paying for multiple premium services so that they can avoid advertising. So what all of this tells you is that this is uh, an incredibly attractive group to target. They are very wealthy. They spend a lot of money on the things that your, uh, that your clients are advertising, but it's incredibly difficult to reach them. And one of the only ways that you can reach this particular attractive affluent group of consumers is with podcasting. Uh, we asked people how much uh, they agreed or disagreed with this statement. Advertising on a podcast is the best way for a brand to reach you. Uh, that's grown from 37% to 49% to 50% now. Half of these podcasting super listeners say that advertising on a podcast is in fact the best way for a brand to reach them. And what's really interesting about this group of consumers is not only are they avoiding advertising, are they paying for services so that they don't have to see advertising, they are also admitting that they, uh, that they are reached by podcast advertising, right? Uh, it, it, you know, if you ask anyone if they enjoy ads, they're going to say no. Uh, but this particular group of consumers is telling us that actually we do enjoy podcast advertising. It works with us. We do pay attention to it. It is, in fact, the best way that we can be reached. Now, I mentioned at the beginning here that, uh, that there was some science behind all of this, and especially as it relates to branded podcasting. And I'm going to get to some branded podcasting data here in a moment. But with branded podcasting, you are not uh, overtly selling a particular product or service, right? You are really selling the brand, or you're at least attaching the brand to a piece of content that, uh, that consumers are, are enjoying or, or, or attach some value to. Uh, in the Journal of Advertising Research, and this was almost uh, 20 years ago, there was a, a large series of studies done on uh, what we call true sponsorship. And in true sponsorship, you're not uh, selling a particular product or service. You're simply saying that this piece of content is brought to you by a particular brand. And there was quite a bit of work done on this. And that is essentially what a branded podcast is. And I'll, I'll show you some of, uh, some of these data. Um, there, a true sponsorship from Volvo uh, was a part of this study. And what you saw uh, in sponsored content, and there was no other kind of sales pitch involved, with this particular uh, campaign. It was just simply mentioned that it was brought to you by Volvo. Uh, there was considerable lift in favorability. There was considerable lift in the intent to purchase. Uh, intent to purchase with the sponsored content was close to 40% compared to 30% with the unsponsored content. Um, and there's an interesting thing about true sponsorship. Again, when it's something is just brought to you by a particular brand, uh, as is the case with branded podcasts. First of all, there's exclusivity, right? There's no other brand mentioned uh, when something is uh, involved with true sponsorship. It's the only brand mentioned. So you have exclusivity within that content. So it becomes, uh, so you stand alone, essentially. There's also an emotional connection, I think, in true sponsorship. There's no strings attached. You love this content. 
this brand is bringing you this content with uh, no strings attached, no, uh, no other, uh, you know, there's no clicking, no other actions necessary. Enjoy this content. It's brought to you by this brand. And there's no uh, particular product advertised, right? There's no particular. Uh, so in the case of the Volvo True Sponsorship that I just showed you, they weren't selling a particular car. They were just uh, bringing you that content from Volvo. So there was no particular advertising per se. It was just brought to you by that uh, particular brand. And here's how all of this works. Advertising changes how you feel about a product, right? A particular Volvo car, for instance. But what true sponsorship does, what we are talking about with branded podcasts, it changes how you feel about the people behind that product. And that's a very valuable distinction. It's something that typical advertising really often does not do, right? It generally does not do that. Um, so the way it works essentially is, okay, maybe an ad will tell you a little bit about Volvo, uh, Volvo being a, you know, a safe car, a stylish car, uh, whatever. But when a particular piece of content is simply brought to you, no strings attached by uh, a manufacturer like Volvo, what that does with the listener is it changes how they feel about the people behind that brand. How could they be bad people if they're bringing me this fantastic piece of content that I enjoy, if they are actually making it possible for me to enjoy this, uh, this podcast that I'm, that I'm listening to, they can't be terrible people, right? Uh, they are trustworthy people or they are people like me. And that's really the important part of branded content, I think, is that it changes how you feel about the people behind that product. So I'm going to close today by showing you, uh, a little bit of research from, we do many, many brand lift studies at Edison Research where we actually measure the impact of branded podcasting. And, and in fact, how branded podcasting can change how people feel about a brand. Um, and I'm gonna show you some results from a study that we did for, for a car manufacturer, actually. It's, it's not Volvo. I cannot tell you who the car manufacturer is. So I drew you the car. Um, I'm a fantastic artist, as you can see. So this is the car that we tested. We asked people who consumed the content, first of all, when thinking about automotive, uh, automotive brands and cars and trucks, which brands come to mind? Um, and as you can see, the car that we tested was already a very popular car. Certainly a lot of people uh, were familiar with it. And what I'm showing you here is the difference between a national online survey of just general consumers, 18 plus, and the people who listened to the branded content. Uh, and as you can see, if you listen to the branded content, you are much more likely to recall the particular brand that we tested, the sponsoring brand there. 81% um, of the people who listened to the branded podcast recalled that brand of automobile. So significantly higher uh, than the national online study that we tested it with, which again, it is a popular car. I'm sure you've heard of it if you couldn't recognize it from my drawing. We also asked which of the following brands, and this is an aided listening uh, question, which of the following brands do you recall hearing about on this particular branded podcast? And by far the sponsored brand was recalled. But again, it's not just recall that we're concerned about because again, this is a very popular brand. Most people will have heard of this brand of car. Recall is not the only thing that we're concerned about with a, uh, with a branded podcast, right? There's also the perception, how people feel about the brand. And we gave people a number of statements. The first one, uh, we asked them if how much they agreed or disagreed with the statement that this podcast was relevant and relatable. And most people agreed with that. The podcast did a good job. It was, a, it was actually a podcast about, um, a, it was a podcast really about educating uh, young girls in science, tech, uh, the so-called STEAM uh, or STEM uh, uh, categories, right? Science, technology, uh, math. And it was a good podcast. So most people agreed that it was in fact relevant and relatable. 58% also agreed that they would definitely remember that this podcast featured the brand of car that sponsored the particular podcast. Uh, and another 58% agreed that it showed me a different side of that. And again, we're talking about advertising, 
right? We're talking about advertising. Nobody enjoys advertising or at least admits that they enjoy advertising. Um, and in this case, you see that the majority of people who listen to this content are giving you positive information about this brand, that they would definitely remember it, that it showed them a different side of that brand than perhaps they knew before. Um, after listening to that podcast, what did these folks plan to do? 58% said they planned to search online for more information about that brand. And almost half said they planned to tell a friend or family member about the podcast. 36% said that they planned to visit that brand's website to learn more. And I would submit that's a very high number. That's more than a third of the people that listen to this podcast are saying they will do an action directly related to learning more about that brand which is quite a thing for people to admit, right? Again, they just listened to a piece of content that was not about that brand at all. It was simply sponsored by that brand, but more than a third say they plan to find out more information about that brand. So the branded podcast did indeed pique people's interest in that brand, uh, that it showed them a different side of that brand. And again, really related to how people think about the people behind that brand. If the people behind that brand sponsored that content, they can't be terrible people. So maybe they make a nice car. And that's really what happens with branded content. Uh, I'm Tom Webster. I thank you so much for your time and attention. I apologize that I had to do it via Zoom. I know we have all seen a lot of Zoom uh, over the past two years. Uh, I'm at least on your side of the Atlantic. Uh, again, I'm with Edison Research. My contact information is available uh, by that QR code. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful conference, a wonderful day. Uh, I miss Milan. I wish I could be there. But thank you so much for the honor of your time and attention. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your um, very thoughtful um, speech um, for the interesting data that you share with us. Um, so we are seeing there is a sort of path, a sort of trend that we are expecting uh, coming from the U.S., who's been, which has uh, pioneered, uh, let's say, the world of podcast uh, and, uh, and this scenario and this phenomenon. Do you expect the same path happening in, in Italy, for instance? Uh, or what, what are your predictions, let's say, in, uh, in, our, in our scenario? Thanks. Yeah, I think a lot of that has to do with the... Uh, with the creation of content in, in Italian, right? Um, we've certainly seen podcasting uh, spread rapidly in, the, uh, in, in countries that are predominantly English speaking. There's certainly a, a tremendous amount of money being spent on uh, English language content. But you know, having said that, uh, podcasting is massive in Brazil, for instance. Mm. And uh, you know, with so many podcasts being produced there, in, uh, in, in Portuguese. So a lot of it has to do with the creation of content and how accelerated that is. But I will say this about, the, about podcasting in the rest of the world. Um, a lot of it has to do with the, uh, how inexpensive mobile data is. And in, in other countries where we have seen mobile data be quite expensive, podcasting actually uh, lags behind a little bit. And when mobile data plans become very inexpensive for people, uh, people stop thinking about what it costs to download content on their phone and things like that. And we, we see a massive jump. So that's, that's one thing that I would point out. The second thing I would point out is that uh, in the United States, at least, most of the audio content that we hear on uh, AM, FM radio uh, for you, for uh, DAB radio and things like that, is not spoken word, it's, it's music. And sp uh, spoken word content in the United States has really lagged because not uh, the commercial broadcast radio stations in America don't produce a lot of spoken word content. It's, uh, this, you know, there previously was a heritage for it, but today there's, there's really not as much. So even in that environment, podcasting has flourished. And in Italy, you have a much stronger heritage for spoken word content, right? Uh, your, your radio stations, you have more popular radio stations that are spoken word uh, content. So there's, I think, an even greater uh, likelihood that the population would enjoy podcasts uh, as they're introduced to them. So 
That's a long-winded way of saying uh, I, I think podcasting is very likely to be at least as popular in Italy as it is in the United States.